In this video I'm going to talk about displacement mapping in Aero for Rhino. Displacement adds extra geometric details to your materials so that you can go from materials that look like this to materials that look like that. You can see that the extra geometric details add a lot to the realism of the tiles material and in the next few minutes I'm going to show you how to set up this kind of material. In order to use displacement in Iron for Rhino, you need an MDL material that supports that. So currently we don't ship in the 1.2 version with a displacement material, so I created a blog post on the Iron for Rhino forum, and I'm posting the link in the video description. So here at this post you will find a zip file to download, and make sure that you save the zip file in the user materials directory. So that is in C users, then followed by your username, documents, MTL, and then there's the user materials folder. So save the zip file here and extract the contents of that zip file to that directory so that the MDL file sits directly inside this directory. And the next time that you start IRF Rhino or the Rhino application, you will see that under user materials your new displacement sample material will appear. Before we start, we make sure that we have all textures prepared for this task. We're going to use, of course, the displacement texture, and for the tiles, we have a diffuse map, a normal map, and a reflection map. I was assuming a tile size of about 18 centimeters and since we see um, two tiles uh, we need to model a surface with a length of 36 centimeters so we're going to do that now starting from this point 36 and 36 and also for reference I put in a pencil and the ruler that you can see the dimensions of the scene. In the next step we're going to assign our displacement material so we open the materials window, go to the library and pick our user materials folder. There you can see our displacement sample material that we assign to our newly created surface. You see that the surface turns black. So let's open our displacement material by double clicking and you can see that this displacement sample material takes another material as base material. So let's create a base material as well. I'm using from the NVIDIA folder the core definitions plastic material which works very well for the tiles that we're going to create. Just drag and drop the plastic on the base material slot and you should see that we have now a working material. To control the displacement, we first need to assign the displacement map to the displacement amount parameter of our material. Simply drag and drop the texture on the parameter slot. Next we need to dial down the displacement scale. The material interprets the black and white values up to a displacement from 0 to 1 meter, which is way too much. The displacement scale parameter allows you to scale down this value. So we will use a maximum displacement of 3 millimeters. so we set displacement scale to 0 0.003. Next, we assign our material to the surface. Right now we don't see any displacement going on, because we also need to enable the displacement on the surface. So you go to the properties, you select uh, the iRay button, and you enable displacement. You can already see some subtle displacement going on, but there is something you need to take care of and that is that you need to increase the max displacement value. Right now it's set to one millimeter, so displacement values that are higher will be clamped, which is not what we want. So let's set max displacement to five centimeters, which is enough for our needs. And you can see that we now get the displaced surface details. A few words to the um, tessellation method. Per default we are using the edge length method and you can tweak the tessellation of your surface. So by using different values you can 
change how fine the surface is tessellated. By using an edge length of one centimeter, we see that we have a very coarse look of our surface, so we can dial down this value to 0 0.5 centimeters, and we already get much better detail. Um, for this, a tessellation size of one millimeter should give us exactly the details that we want on the surface. And you see that we have now a nicely displaced surface that we can work with. So now let's add some extra detail to our tiles material. To do that, just open the base material and click on it, which opens the plastic material that we assigned before. Of course, this is not plastic, so rename it to tiles. And now we can assign the remaining textures that we have prepared. So um, let's add some geometric detail by using our normal map. Right now, you see we have some rough displacement, but here, for example, the concrete could need some more extra detail. And the normal maps that we have prepared does provide this extra detail. So let's drag and drop the normal map to the bump slot. And we choose no to say that this is a normal map. And you can see all of a sudden we get nice extra detail on the concrete and here on the edges, which is really good. Now we also add the diffuse texture on the color slot. So let's see how that looks like. That looks already much, much better. And since the reflection on the tiles is, well, currently very even, um, I've prepared a reflection texture that I will assign to the reflection weight to get a greater variation on this tiles material and you will see that this will add furthermore to the realism of that material. So by doing this now if we look at the surface at the grazing angle you see that this slightly breaks up the reflection on the tiles. Now that we have set up the tiles material, we can try assigning it to a bigger surface patch and see how the material looks like in a bigger context. I prepared a 2 by 2 meter patch. So let's hide the small patch and show the big floor. And we assign our material to it. Well, you will notice that of course we need to adjust um, the tiling of the surface. So Let's go to the properties, select the texture mapping, and we apply simple surface mapping. And we set the UV W repeat to 6, which should be the exact tiling, um, pretty much the same size that we had before. And again, of course, we need to enable uh, displacement for IRA. So I'm enabling it here, and like before, I'm increasing the max displacement value, so 5 centimeters is more than enough, and we leave the edge length parameter at 1 millimeter. So now we need to wait a little bit till iRay has finished tessellating the surface. So since we are assigning this to a bigger surface patch, much more polygons are created. But the advantage of using the edge length method is uh, no matter how big your surfaces, you will always get the correct size of the tessellation. So this is very practical. So let's see how the surface looks like. So I've put here this lovely toy so that we have some context of the scale of everything. And yeah, so let's let this sit and render for a while. And you see that we have a lot of detail there. And I recommend when you really want to create stunning renders that depending on the materials that you're using and that you need, that you should check out displacement and, you know, it will add a lot to the realism of the materials that you create. 
If you want to learn more about our software, visit us at nvidia.com/iray.